Here I'll show you three different ways to automatically update your drop-down lists or menus in Excel. So here we have drop-down list. If you go over here to the source data and you add another item, you want this guy over here to automatically update. And I'll show you three ways to do that. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. The first method that I'll show you is the table name method. And this is probably the most robust and versatile method for having a dynamic drop down menu. So here we have the list of data that we want to appear in the drop down menu or list. And we have a little header up here. It's a very good idea to have a header. So just put a header on the list of data. And let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do with our data set is to convert it to a table. And there are a few steps involved here, but don't worry, they're not too difficult. So click anywhere in the data, then go to insert and click table, or you can see the keyboard shortcut right there, control T. Once you do that, it's going to try and select your data, make sure it selected it correctly. And since you put a header in, check my table has headers. That'll make sure it formats the top row a little bit different. So you can see here now it has changed formatting. We have a table and you can do so many cool things with tables. I'm not going to cover any of that today. Just this one little thing to have our list update automatically. So you can see we have a drop down arrow. Play around with that if you want. Not important right now. And don't worry about the formatting. I'll show you how to remove that in a moment if you don't want it to appear like this. So here's our list. Now the next step to put it into the drop down menu the best way is to go ahead and name our list. So select the data that you want to appear in the list, excluding the header, and we can name it two ways. First, we'll name it with the name box up here. Just click, highlight table two or whatever it says, and type a name and hit enter. Now, it's always a good idea to make sure that it was entered correctly. So you can go to the formulas tab and name manager. There we're going to see our table, it's the table we just input, and the name fruit. So we can see data about it right here or double click and we can see the same data, the name and what it refers to. And you'll see that the reference is rather interesting. It's not a named reference. It's the reference of the table and the column of data within the table that you want to refer to. So we have the table name, it's table two, and we have the column name, so this is the header, that's why it's very important, which is fruit. So you make the header simple and easy to understand, it's going to be simple and easy to understand it here in the formula. So this is how you refer to data when it's within a table, and now we've simply made that reference within a named range. Now if you're worried about making the named range correctly, you can just go to the name manager and hit new, and type in whatever you want some name and down here in refers to you can click the arrow and go over here and select the data and you'll notice when we select here it's table and the column name if you select everything it'll be table all fruit don't worry too much about that just select the data that you want to appear in the list and you'll be okay then hit enter and hit OK, and it will create another name. So two different ways to do it from the name manager or just within the worksheet. So now that we have our name, we've verified that it makes the correct reference. Click in here and it will highlight the data. We are good to go. So let's close this, close this, go here. And we want to go to data validation. So select the cell, go to the data tab. And where are you now? Right down here, data validation or the keyboard shortcut Alt-D-L. I find it's a little bit easier, Alt-D-L. Now on the settings tab, under allow, click list. So sometimes I call this a drop down menu, Excel calls it a drop down list. It's pretty much the same thing. And we wanna go down here to source and we want to input the name that we just created. So we could do equals fruit, or if you don't remember the name, for me, this is often the case. Just click in here and hit F3, and a little window will come up with all of the named ranges that you've created. Select the correct one, hit OK, 
and now we have our named range. Hit OK once again, and we have a list. Yay! So let's go ahead and test it. Add another value here, and it grows. How awesome is that? All I did here is to convert our list into a table, then name the range of the data that we want to show in the data validation list. So I named the fruit range, basically, without the header. And then I referenced that name within the data validation. So three steps, create a table, name a range, put that name in the data validation list. That's all. And this is the most robust method for doing this. If I want to, for instance, go up here and change it to fruits, hit enter. Let's see if we still work over here. No problemo. Add another value. All is good. So that allows me to change the name of this guy right here. And if we go to the formulas name manager, fruit, you will see right down here that fruit has become fruits with the S at the end of it. So when you use this method, it will automatically update everything for you. No worries. Now let's go ahead and remove this formatting because oftentimes you don't want a table format. Well, just click anywhere in the table, go to table design, drop down menu, and choose this option in the upper left, which is none. And now we have something where you can almost not tell it's a table. You can still see a little thing down here and the drop down button, but basically you can't really tell it's a table anymore and it still works the same. Oops, there we go. I really like this, removing the table formatting because we still get all of the wonderful features of the table, but without any of that stupid formatting that can mess up your worksheet. And the last thing for this just to show you is we can even change the table name to from table two to, I don't know, one, two, three. And this will still work. Now, if you don't want to use a table at all, I will show you how to do that with a custom formula in the third example. But for now, let us move to the table plus formula example. So here we're going to convert the data into a table just as before. So select it, insert table with a header, yes. And now, the only reason I'm showing you this, this is not a good way to do it, but I'm showing you this because so many people talk about it on the internet, and it seems easier than the last one because we can skip a step. So if we are in the workbook like this, we can do equals, and we can select this, and we see equals, table three, fruit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this now. So table three is the name Excel automatically gave this table right here. And fruit is the name of the data like it was on the previous tab because that's the name of the header. So when I hit enter here, the new versions of Excel are going to go ahead and show you the full list of data that would appear. These cells down here weren't actually typed in. There isn't actually a formula here. If I double click the cell, you'll see it's empty. Don't worry about that. Excel just does that in case you're using formulas that reference ranges and they want to show you everything. It's kind of a cool new little feature, but it doesn't matter. All that I'm showing you here is that it works, right? I get a nice little range, yay. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and put this in data validation, right? Here, alt DL, list, source. It doesn't work. So there is a very simple way around this. Close this. What you want to do is to surround this with the indirect function. Give it a quotation mark. Everything looks the same here, but now we can go ahead and use this here. Yay, all looks good, right? Yay, wrong. What if someone goes up here and renames it like we did in the other one? Oops, error. 
Oh, drop down arrow. Looks good, right? Nope. Doesn't work. I'm trying to click it right now. Won't open. So can you use this method? Yes. Does it skip the named range step? Yes. Is it versatile? Absolutely not. Will someone break it eventually? Absolutely. And just like it doesn't work if you rename the column header, it's not going to work if you rename the table. So if you're going to use a table, just go forward with the extra step of having a named range and use this method. Much more versatile will survive all of your employees changing little things on your workbook, as long as they don't erase the name. Now let's move on to the third way to do it. And this is kind of cool. This one, we're going to use a formula. So you don't need a table at all. So in one respect, this is a little bit more complex, but you're not going to have to convert anything to a table, and you're not going to have to use a named range. The formula or function we're going to use is the offset function. It's a pretty cool little function that allows you to select a range in Excel based off of a reference cell. It's kind of confusing at first. So I'm not going to go through a bunch of examples. Let's just write it out, and I'll show you how, how it works as we go along. So equals offset. You can see the, ref the explanation here. Returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. Not so helpful, though. <laughs> but basically, we're going to use this to create a dynamically sized range. So the first argument is reference, and that's the base cell. That's where do you want to start. Well, we want to start at the start of the list of data that we want to show. So this will be the first part of the range reference. So if you make a range reference, say A2 to A4, this would be the A2. This will never change. Now, you can also use offset to, well, offset the reference. So if we wanted to move it one to the right or one down or up or to the left, you could do that with the next two arguments, rows and columns. However, we do not want to move it at all. We want the reference to stay at A2. But we do want to change one thing. Here we can change the last two arguments. We can change the height of the range reference and the width of the range reference. Now we want to change the height to encompass all of the data. So how do we do this? Well, we count how many cells have data in them. You can do that a few different ways. If you start to type count, you'll see a bunch of different options here. Count counts the number of cells that have numbers. Count A, which is what we're going to use, counts the number of cells that are simply not empty. So let's use uh, that one. And now what you can do is you can select the range of values. So let's say it will only ever be between A2 and A10. You could do that. Or you could select the entire column, as long as you're in Excel 2007 and later, and go like this. So the range reference now looks like A to A. Now, if you do this, of course, make sure you have no other data below your list or above your list that you don't want to appear. Or if you have data above it, that's okay. I'll show you how to get around that in a moment. Just make sure that doesn't change in the future. So we have count A to A. It's going to count all the cells that have values in them, right? So here we have four, but one is a header row. So, so that we do not account for the header row, we must subtract one. If we had two rows for headers or extra data above this, we would subtract two. When you're using basic data like this, just put it at the top of your worksheet, give it one header row, and that makes it easier. You only have to subtract one from the count. So now what it's going to do is this will count and return four. So if I hit F9, you can see that, four. And we subtract one to get a total of three, three cells with data in it. So that adjusts the height of the range reference A2 to encompass three cells. Now we can close parentheses. And if you are in a new and updated version of Excel, what's going to happen the moment that I hit enter is it'll fill the next two cells, or it'll fill three cells, C2 to C4, with values. If you are in an older version of Excel, I believe you just see an error right here because you can't represent a range within a single cell. And this is the same thing that happened in the last example where the data fills in right here like this. So that's all that is. And now once you've made sure that everything is good, everything is happy, all hunky-dory, what we can do, I'm actually going to go ahead and put dollar signs in front of this. Okay. Select this dude, copy it, go over here, Alt DL, list, source, paste it in, 
OK. Perfect. Now let's try it. Perfect. And it doesn't matter what we do up here because our formula has absolutely nothing to do with that. But if you do, let's say, go to delete it, you will run into a problem because remember our formula has the minus one. So if you remove the header, simply remove the minus one. But we want to keep the header in there, so let's back that up. So you can see that this method, yes, it doesn't require using a table or a named range, but you do have to use a rather potentially confusing formula or function. And if you learn how to use it just for this tutorial, you might forget how to use it in the future. Remember, the most robust, easiest method to use without any complex anything, really, just a table and a named range, is this one right here, the table plus name example. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.